Hey, what's going on everybody? I am Nick with Mystery Mountain Outdoors and today I am out riding solo so I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about the 2020 Yamaha Wolverine X4. Okay, so let's cover some of the basics of this unit. If you're watching this video, you probably have a general idea what this thing is and kind of what it's all about. But if you don't, we'll just cover the basics real quick. Obviously, we talked about what this unit is, Yamaha Wolverine X4. Um, from the factory, it is 61 inches wide in the front and a little bit narrower in the rear. Um, the way I have it set up, I have an aftermarket wheel and tire package from Yamaha. Um, these are 28 inch by 10 inch by 14 uh, EFX Moto Claw tires. I've got the MSA 14 inch wheels and then the, it's a square setup so I can rotate them um, and then I don't have to change anything. So it's actually two inches wider uh, in the front than it used to be. I believe it's 87 inch wheelbase. It could be 83, 87, something like that. And that's actually really short for this class. So I think there, at the time of this video, there's about three options that are a short utility uh, sport type unit. There's the Kawasaki Terex, there's the Honda Pioneer, and then there's the Yamaha Wolverine. Now I chose this one personally uh, for a handful of reasons, uh, and we'll get into those here in a minute. But it has the rear seats that are convertible, so you actually pop them up, slide it forward, and it gives you more of a cargo area. Now, when I was looking at units, I wanted something that had good power, had four-wheel drive, that, that was actually shorter. I didn't want a really long wheelbase, because I take it in the mountains of Idaho. You can see we're, we're on a trail ride today. So I wanted something with a shorter wheelbase that I can get in and out that was nimble. I wanted something that was four seats. Uh, I've got a young family, I've got a three year old, and I've got a, a little girl that's about to turn one. So I wanted something that I could take the family, but then also convert over and put an elk in the back or something like that. Um, so some of the other basics on this unit, it's an 849 cc or 47 cc uh, parallel twin. Um, it puts out 69 horsepower and, and it's really linear power. Uh, it has great torque down low, and as you drive it, you notice that you've just got a really nice power band. It's definitely not a rocket ship by any means, but it has plenty of power to, to get you around and have fun with. Now, this is classified as a sport utility. So the other two units that kind of match in this little segment, if you will, um, the, the Terex has a sporty feel, but in, in my opinion, it's got some downsides, right? It's, it, it produces a ton of heat in the cab. It's really, really noisy, and, and the seats are great, but then you have not nearly as much uh, cargo and utility, and it is a longer unit. Um, the, the Pioneer, same thing. It's, it's kind of a sport utility, but it's got a bench seat in the front. Uh, it, you sit more upright. It doesn't feel quite as sporty when you drive it. And then the, the seats, when they fold up, are kind of a stadium style. And I don't really like that. So this one here is kind of the best option that I could find that had the short wheelbase, that had the seats that moved forward, but still gave me the ability to take my family. One of the other things about this is obviously it's four wheel drive. The rear diff is always, it's always locked. And then, in my opinion, I wish they would have done it to where you had kind of like the turf mode that the Polaris's do. Uh, so if you're driving in grass or, or if you're on pavement, it could wear your tires out a little sooner. I wish they would have had a, an option to turn that off, but they don't. Uh, but it does have fully locking front differentials, which is a little interesting. Um, I like that because I, like I said, I hunt, I'll be in the snow. There's a lot of scenarios where being able to lock the differentials in and really have a good low gear uh, to crawl around will be, will be great. So why don't I grab the camera and we'll just do a walk around and I'll show you all sorts of things about this. I'll kind of show you what I've done so far and let you guys get a little closer look at it. So as we come around the front of this thing, you can see there's a couple added things, right? I talked about the wheel and tire package that I got from Yamaha. 
Um, in addition to that, I've got that brush guard on there. That is a factory Yamaha brush guard. Um, the stock bumper, we took that off. The uh, KFI Assault Series 5,000 pound synthetic rope winch. I love that thing. It's been awesome so far. I've actually had to use it already. Uh, being that this is not the XTR model, uh, the XTR model, if you look at it, it's a black and kind of a, a burnt bronze or something like that, they call it. Uh, that one comes with some 27 inch tires. It comes with reservoir uh, piggyback shocks. And it comes with a factory worn winch. Now all that sounds great. And I did similar things to this unit that that one comes with stock, but I actually wanted a 14 inch wheel. I wanted a 28 inch tire. I wanted the tires to be square and I wanted a synthetic rope winch. None of those things uh, match what the XTR are. So I actually opted for the white colored unit and then did all the accessories myself. Um, so as we come around, you can see it's a four door unit. Although the rear doors are pretty small, it's actually pretty easy to get in and I'll show you that here in a minute. Coming around the back here, you can see obviously it's got a normal tailgate with a single latch, which is really awesome to have. Now, the way I've got this configured right now is the, the rear seats are back for passengers, uh, even though I don't have any today, but you can see I've got a cooler, gas can, I have a camera bag that sits here, and then this is kind of my tool kit. So there's not a ton of room back here, but there's definitely some cargo space um, and kind of a, a nice little area is between where the motor is and then the two seats here. It's actually pretty usable. So um, I'll show you how the seat goes up. So when you don't want passengers, what you can do is you can grab this seat. It just pops up and there's a little detent there. And then there's a lever back here. Just grab a hold of that. And there you go. So now we've converted this thing and we've got tons of cargo space. Uh, I've put a cooler sideways in here and, and with both the seats forward, you could fit a lot of cargo back there. In the front here, you've obviously got a grab bar like all the units have. You've got a glove box. I've got some mountain money in there. And then if you look, I've got the remote switch. Um, for the winch, it coils up in there, and that's actually what this pocket was designed for. And then this is actually predetermined holes uh, for the worn winch if you were to get the factory winch. But I use the same thing for the KFI, so all my stuff for the winch goes in there. Put this back in there, it'll stay okay. You've got a 12 volt accessory port, you've got cutouts, these are blanks, they're just rubber pads, you can pull them out and you can run switches. It's got a center, uh, center cluster display. And then I've got kind of a custom made phone mount and, and a GoPro or whatever. Um, we'll come around to the other side. So on the driver's side, you've got your four wheel drive. It is on command, it is not on the fly. So on command means you just stop you can put it in four wheel drive and four wheel diff lock, which is great. You've got headlights, high and low beam. The, the buttons and the knobs all feel really, really good. If you've got gloves on or something, they're very tactile, easy to turn. And that's one of the refinement things about this that I've noticed that everything works really, really well together. Um, Yamaha did a great job setting this thing up. I mean, even the interior of the doors has been finished. The handle is on the inside so that you don't get uh, sticks caught in it or mud. So you can just reach in, pop the door open. It is a, uh, a full door, I, I guess you could call it. It's got these shoulder bolsters to kind of keep you in place if you were kind of getting after it. Um, but it, it does have the four doors, which is great. So let me climb inside and I'll kind of show you some of the, the features on the inside and kind of how all this works. And then we'll talk about comfort in the driver's seat and in the rear seat. So let me put this back on the tripod and we'll take a look. Okay, so getting into this thing, like I said, door handles on the inside. There is this 
uh, little little piece that kicks out here where the door actually latches and you have the shoulder bolster I'm six foot tall roughly 200 pounds so when I get in what I have to do is I kind of grab something and I just pull my butt in and you can sit right down it's not that it's not that hard but you do have something here but like I said I'm, I'm a I'm not a small guy by any means with this shoulder bolster it kind of keeps me in place it's not uncomfortable at all um, and I actually kind of like it, especially if you had a, a young kid or your wife or something. If you're going around a corner, they've got something to lean against. Now, it does have a tilt wheel. Um, I like it about right there, but that is nice a feature to have. It also has a sliding seat that you can adjust. Uh, my wife fits in here just fine. Uh, the ergonomics of this thing, I've noticed if you drive like a turbo razor or one of those, you sit kind of down and a little more reclined. This thing is, is you, you sit a little higher in the, in the cab and a little bit more forward, but you are leaned back just enough and there's just enough bolstering that it feels pretty sporty. Um, some of the things that you may not think about when you're shopping, but you'll definitely notice once you buy a unit is things like uh, for instance, the gauge cluster. This one is a, a fairly large display. It's easy to read. Um, some guys prefer it right in front of you, kind of on, a, on the steering column. Uh, that would make it easier to see. Uh, but for me, looking forward down or to the side is really not that big of a deal. I don't have to turn my head. Um, the buttons are easy to, to mess with. It actually has a dead pedal down here in the bottom for you to rest your foot up against, uh, which is really nice. And it has that actually for the passengers uh, in the front and in the rear. And it's got some grip texture so you can kind of plant yourself in this thing. Uh, if you ever ride in a Polaris Ranger, one of those, it's completely flat floor bed. Um, and it doesn't give you that, that kind of a sporty, comfortable feel, especially if you're going downhill. So that's one of those things you wouldn't notice. Um, on the Yamahas, they don't have a parking brake. So you've got neutral, you've got reverse, high, and low. And if you notice how easy that is to put into gear, the Ultramatic transmission and the clutch setup on the Yamahas is really second to none in my opinion. It, it shifts incredibly smooth. It works really well. And the fact that this thing has a 10-year belt life warranty is kind of unheard of in the industry so that's that's incredible um as you can see i'm i'm seated in here uh, i've got my knee up against this here and up against the door and it's actually perfect i i like the way it feels it gives me something to kind of push up against uh the where the, your switches would end up are actually easy to get to uh, i'm going to add some more accessories here in a little while but for now um I've just got the winch, but they're easy to reach. Um, it does have a, a large center console, and I've actually pressure washed this whole unit and never got water on the inside. Even though there's not a water seal per se, it goes over the top. So a very large center console. It's got the glove box like we were talking about. So let me set up, we'll, we'll hop in the back, we'll take a look at that as well. Okay, we're going to hop in the back. Same thing, the handle's on the inside. Now, what you'll notice is because the roll cage is at an angle, this door wants to close. So you just kind of have to keep the door open. Now, I grab a hold of the bar, and I just plop in there. Now, like I said, I'm a bigger guy, but I've got plenty of room in here. The seat is comfortable. I'm nowhere near hitting my knees, which is great. And then you've got a nice rubberized grab handle. Now they call this uh, stadium seating. So the seating in the, in the rear is actually just a little bit higher so that the passenger can kind of see what's going on up front, which I really like. Um, you'll notice this center console is pretty, pretty large. It does have four cup holders, which is great. But one of the things that you have to think about with that is it actually puts your, your feet slightly off to the side. So the last couple things to note back here is the ease of access for the, the motor. The top of the motor, you take out these little thumb screws. There's five little thumb screws. You can pop this off and get right in there to the motor, uh, Get check your oil and that kind of thing. Um, but also, 
uh, heat and noise. Um, I didn't touch on this much uh, a little bit earlier, but one of the things that the Yamaha engineers really strived for on this unit when they were designing it is they'd they'd taken feedback from customers and and people wanted uh, a quiet unit and they wanted something that didn't produce a ton of heat and and I will say that I've ridden in a handful of different side by sides uh, you there's almost no heat coming off of this thing they've done a very good job there's no vibration the motor is completely rubber isolated uh, and and all the doors and everything seal really well uh, there's no rattles from seats or anything everything is solid so there's not a lot of noise and rattle and then the last thing the engine noise itself it is a very quiet machine um, and I actually like the way it sounds It's kind of a deeper throatier tone so let me hop out we'll do a little bit more walkthrough okay the last couple things on the outside that we haven't touched on yet is on the 2020 model one of the things they did is they moved the rear back a little ways so that you can run a larger tire and not hit the frame on the 2019 model um, some of the guys that were running bigger tires had some rubbing issues and then also in the front see if i can show you there's a brace up there that they've added to the shock tower. So they've determined that they needed a little more rigidity in the frame for some of those guys that are getting kind of crazy. As we come around the back, it does have a two inch full receiver. Um, that is a 2000 pound towing capacity. And then in the bed for cargo, it is 600 pounds, which is quite a bit uh, and that, that's great. So another small feature in the back is this actually has self-leveling shocks. So as you load more people in there or more cargo, and then you drive down the trail a little ways, it'll actually self-level back to the max ground clearance, um, which is really, really nice. So they, the engineers have thought about the fact that people are gonna use this either for just two people on a trail ride all the way to a loaded down unit full of people and camp gear and stuff like that. So that's a really nice feature. Now the stock unit is 10.7 inches of ground clearance. This one, the way it sets with the 28 inch tires is 12 and a quarter front and rear, um, which is quite a bit. It has arched A-arms in the front, but for some reason they did not do it in the rear. I wish they would have done arched A-arms in the rear um, so that you maximize your ground clearance, but I've never had any issues with hitting anything. So we'll move around a little bit here. It has a fully welded steel undercarriage and it actually has kind of a, a belly to it. I don't know if you can see that, but it, it kind of uh, arcs up towards the side, um, which I really like. I think the protection on this thing is gonna be great if you were taking it down some some rocky trails or somewhere where you might have sticks or uh, rocks um, coming up and they won't damage anything. This skid plate in the front is actually plastic. I think that is intentional um, just so that it kind of pushes things under. It seems to slide easier on plastic. Um, it does, like I said, have arched A-arms in the front and everything, if you look at it, is built really, really well on this unit. Uh, everything is easy to access for maintenance. I actually just did the first maintenance on it and it's super easy. All right, so I think I'm done talking about this thing. We've done a general walkthrough. We've talked about some of the features and everything, but the main thing is to get in and just drive it and see what it's all about. So let's hop back in and hit the trails.
uh, one of the things is the throttle response, uh, the, the way that it acts, and the, the power delivery is, is awesome on this unit. So it has a fly-by-wire system. Sorry, going over big bump here. It's got a fly-by-wire system, and Yamaha's done a great job of taking all the jitters out, going over bumps and everything else. It's very, very smooth. Uh, in addition to that is the power delivery and the power band on this thing. It has a lot of low end grunt, uh, especially down low uh, in low gear and everything else. But when you step on it, I mean, it's got power right when you need it. Now I'm sliding around the corner, getting a little crazy here. Like we talked about is the, the seating position and the driver comfort and the experience, honestly. The driver experience is phenomenal in this thing. Uh, for what it is, for a sport side-by-side that's -side, uh, also utility. And what I mean is the suspension it does a pretty good job. It's not the same as some of the others that have, you know, 30 inches of suspension travel or whatever. But it does a really good job for everyday driving. Uh, washboard, you really don't even feel it. Uh, you can hear the motor, uh, I'm sure. But if you notice, I'm going 20 miles an hour and I don't have a windshield or anything, and it's it's not overpowering at all. You can have a standard conversation with somebody uh, and really enjoy the, the an outing with family. So I'm coming down the mountain. I'll be dropping into a mountain lake here in just a few minutes. Uh, but I want to do a little bit of in-cab driving so you can kind of see. Hopefully it's not too bumpy and, and the microphone doesn't cut out. Um, but this thing will definitely put a, a smile on your face when you're driving around. And the power steering is tuned very, very well. The way this thing feels makes you feel like you're in a full sport unit, uh, and I really like that. So if you're on a loose road, uh, it's easy to pitch this thing sideways and have some fun with it. Now that could be good and bad. I think that is why Yamaha Speed Limited these units to 50 miles an hour is because you could get all kind of crazy, but I actually like the driver input and the feel of this thing. It's very predictable. So when I go into a corner, uh, I can feel where the steering's want me to go. I can pitch the rear end where I want it, and, and it just it feels natural and, and intuitive, and that, that's a big plus. Um, being that it is a little bit shorter, with your ground clearance, you're a lot less likely to high center, uh, things like that. And you can get it on these tighter trails. This is just a forest service road, so you can take really any vehicle. Um, but when you do get it on those tighter roads, I think you'll notice a huge difference. So let me swap over to the GoPro, and uh, let's just get some footage of having some fun, shall we? I got a straight section, let's roll up. Well guys, here we are. We're at uh, one of the beautiful Trinity Lakes here in Idaho. Um, we came up over the top. I think we put on about 65 miles. We started at the river, we came all the way up over the top of the mountain pass, and we're at the lake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start heading back down so I can get home. Uh, round trip, it'll probably be 130 miles or so, I think. Um, but before we wrap up this video, uh, I wanna talk about the good, I wanna talk about the bad, and I want to give you my final thoughts. So uh, let's find a good spot in the shade, have something to drink, something to snack on, and we'll finish up this video with some of the, the key things that I think you guys ought to know. Okay, so we are about wrapped up here on my review of the 2020 Wolverine X4. Now, like I was saying, I want to talk about the good, I want to talk about the bad, and I just want to give you my final thoughts kind of what I think, and then maybe this is a machine for you or maybe it's not. So um, let's start with the bad because there really isn't that much bad. 
Uh, one of the first things is the rear end. Like I was saying, I wish it had the ability to be a limited slip with a turf mode of some sort. Um, that would be fantastic for those situations where you're driving on pavement or grass or something so you don't tear anything up. And then on the front end, yes, it has locking differentials and it has four wheel drive, so you can choose either one. The only thing is I wish it kind of had a, a all wheel drive mode as well. Uh, when you're on a slippery road, I don't want to be in four wheel drive all the time, but I also don't want to be in two wheel drive. I'd like it to kick in and out when it needs to, again, for the longevity of the tires. So those are a couple things that I would like to change. Um, another bad, I guess you could say, and really it's, it's just a nitpicky thing, is the, the clutch. When, when you want to service the clutch, it is really hard to get to. You have to actually pull a seat out, you have to pull some plastic pieces off, and then you can get into the clutch. Now, saying that, this has a 10 year belt life warranty um, and, and everybody says it's one of the best CVTs in the entire industry. Um, I've not had any issues. I've got 300 and something miles on it, which isn't much, but you shouldn't have any issues with it. And, and it's got kind of a constant tension system. So really I wouldn't worry about that. Those are the only couple things I could think of in, in the bad category, if you will. Um, on the good, the, the, the hands down the most important thing is the experience when you drive it, right? I have so much fun driving this thing, I can't even tell you. Um, I've had my family, we've gone on little little trips around the neighborhood. I haven't been able to get them out yet because we have a 11 month old daughter and we don't have a babysitter and COVID and all that stuff. At the time of this video, we've got that going on. So, um, but I've taken a friend, we've gone around, I can throw my gear in the back uh, and when you get in and you start driving, you just have so much fun. The way it drives, the way it handles, the way you sit in it, the steering, the throttle, all of those things added together make you feel sporty. It, it, it gives you confidence to go wherever you want to go. And that is so important in a side-by-side. -side. I know that there's utility vehicles um, like the Polaris Ranger that maybe do some utility things better but the driving experience in this, I promise you will be better. And then maybe there's a, a Turbo Razor Can-Am X3 or something like that. And yes, they have tons of, tons of power and suspension travel and all that, but this is aimed at a different group, right? I paid 15,900 for this before Idaho sales tax, and that was with the factory roof and the factory brush guard. That is so much cheaper than some of the other options out there. I, I looked at the Polaris General 4 seat. Um, I didn't like how long it was. And then the price was in the mid 20s. So just that right off the bat, the price point is so much better. Um, one thing I will say about this uh, on the really good uh, category is you have that 10 year belt life warranty. You have the factory six month warranty which they have a yes program, they call it. You can extend that for five years. So a total of uh, five years, five months, or six months, or whatever. Um, in addition to that, if you use Yamalu products, even if you change the oil yourself, if you log it on their computer website, you can actually have a 5,000 hour, 20 year, or 100,000 mile warranty on the motor. I would challenge you to find me anybody else that offers that. That is pretty crazy. Um, now granted, that's if you use the products and all that stuff, but I just did a full service on this thing and it was maybe 50, 60 bucks. And I did, I did all of it. I did the differentials, the transmission, the motor and everything. So to give you my final thoughts on this, uh, and I've had it, like I said, for a couple months now, I've driven a little over 300 miles. I've taken it up over this mountain pass that you guys experienced with me today. I've taken it on some other stuff. I've taken it in the desert and the rocks. Um, my final thoughts are, is if you were looking for a solid utility vehicle, something you want to take out and, and, and go on the ranch and you want to carry a bunch of hay bales and, and you want to do stuff like that and you want to work it hard, this probably isn't the unit that is best suited for that. Um, if you want to go 
80 miles an hour on a trail and blast over uh, speed bumps and, and, and whoops, this obviously isn't the, the unit for you. But if you wanna be able to take four people, have a lot of fun doing it, and then convert it over and use it for utility, have good suspension, four wheel drive, a quality motor, and the fact that this thing is just supposed to be bulletproof. I have not had any issues, but I, I just, and the price point, it just fit everything that I needed for, for, for my situation. Uh, and it was a no brainer which one to get. I actually drove uh, five hours to another state to go pick this up because they were nowhere around. Again, at the time of this video, we're right in the middle of this COVID thing. So uh, they were hard to find, but, but that says a lot about this unit is they're pretty sought after. So um, the last little bit is I wanna talk about is I did, I talked about the wheels and tires a little bit. I have a video on that that kind of goes in a little bit more detail. Uh, or if you leave a comment below and you have any questions, I can answer that. I have an installation video on the winch and an, a review of the KFI Assault winch. When I first decided that was the winch I wanted, there was no videos out there that talked about the winch, that talked about the install. Um, so I made a video for that. And I'll probably be doing some more accessories I have a windshield on the way, I've got a light bar in the garage, and I'm going to put a relay fuse box set up inside of here, and I'll probably post some videos about that. So this, this channel is not 100% dedicated to something like this, um, but if you like this, like us, subscribe, and we'll be posting more videos. And if there's something that you want to see on this, if I missed anything, or if you want to see it doing a 50 mile an hour run or you want to do some decibel readings or something just leave a comment below and and i'll cover that for you so thanks for watching i hope you like this and i'm going to enjoy this nice little uh little view i'm going to find some shade eat something and then i am out of here thanks for watching guys bye